Now that you know how to speak to the press, you need to figure out how to contact them. But where do you start? How do you find contact info? Do I really need to pay for this pricey press release service? On this episode of Better Advocacy and Total Military Lists, I'm going to show you how I've built my own media lists that have gotten my press releases placed in all types of media. All right, so why do this? Why build a press release? Can't I just rely on my social media and opt in email list? You want people to know about what you're doing, about your passion that you want to turn into policy. But your natural network is only so big. You might have hundreds or even thousands of followers on social media or in your email list. But mass media, well, that reaches the masses. If you want to grow beyond your natural audience, then you need to connect with news outlets, magazines, and other places that have a wider reach than you do. Now, before we go any further, let's talk about third-party providers. There are lots of services offering to send your press release to tens of thousands of media outlets around the country. Usually, I think these are a waste of resources. If you're working on state policy in Bangor, Maine, you really don't need media coverage in Tucson, Arizona. But if you just don't have the time to compile a media list or find one from an ally, then go ahead, pay for one of these services because it's better than not doing anything. Personally, I believe in you and your ability to create your own list. Why? Because when you create your own, you know who's getting your message. That is going to the outlets you want to feature your story. Plus, it's not that hard to make one. Now, before you start searching for contact info, the first thing you want to do is identify where you want your story placed. Where are the people you're most interested in connecting with? Where do they get their news? Also, think about the scale of your policy proposal. Is it state, local, or national? That will guide you on where to focus. Most of my policy work is done at the state level, so I'm looking for local and regional media outlets that focus on the state I'm working in, Virginia, Arizona, wherever else it might be. Are there policy makers you're targeting? Where do they live? If I'm pushing for some type of change, I'm not trying to get into every small paper. But if a key legislator happens to represent that small town paper, then you better believe I'm working to get my story in there, so I definitely want to get my press release to them. On the national level and to a lesser extent on the state and local levels, you also have specialty media. These aren't your mainstream media outlets or even your partisan ones for that matter. These are magazines, newspapers, YouTube channels, and the like that are focused on a specific topic. The environment, justice reform, gun rights, you get the idea. People that get news from these sources are actively engaged in that space and are looking for stories specific to the topic. Getting placed in one of these is a great way to expand your engaged base. Sometimes you can just use one press release blast to hit all of these, but you'll usually have better luck tailoring your message to local and state or national media mainstream or specialty. If you really have a lot of time on your hands, you can add that urban rural split too, but that's not as impactful. But still, you're looking to segment your list so that you are sending the right message to the right group. And now that you've identified who you want on your list, you need to find email addresses and put them into a spreadsheet. And yes, I always store my list in a spreadsheet in addition to email marketing programs. I find it easier to visualize and update that way. So where are these emails? Sometimes this is easy as going to the Contact Us page on their website. Other times it might take some digging around or web searching to find it. But here are the four steps I take. First, is there a Contact Us page with emails? Not just a web submission form. We'll get to that later. Great. You found that Contact Us page. Find the right people to add to your list. In small papers, it may just be the editor. At media outlets, there may be a reporter assigned to your beat, a specific editor that oversees that reporter, and a manager editor overseeing all of the news. If so, add all three. If there's no Contact Us page with all that great info, then see who's writing about your topic and add those specific reporters. Even if there aren't any similar stories on the front page, use the search function, and if you can, limit the results to the last year, and see what reporters show up in the byline. Are the reporters' names hyperlinked to an email address? Great! That made your job really easy. Right-click, copy email address, and then paste it into your spreadsheet. But 
If you still can't find an email address, don't give up. Google that reporter's name or media outlet and email and see what comes up. I'd say I find about 75% of the emails I'm looking for this way. And if you still can't find an email, don't give up. Here's the next level tip. Go to their Contact Us web submission form, view source, and see if there's an email address listed. Now, why not just use their web submission form? Because we're trying to be efficient. You want to be able to drop all these emails in your BCC line and press send and not have to go to a bunch of sites and copy and paste your press release into different forms. But if you still can't find an email, that's what you're gonna have to do. Now, once you start using your press list, you want to keep it updated. Having outdated addresses means you're missing potential media placement. So how do I keep my list up to date? First, I pay attention to bounced emails. Make sure there wasn't a typo. Did you get an auto reply with a new person to contact? Add that email and delete the old one. If you get a bounced email with no details, check the media outlet and find another contact. If I was emailing the state government reporter, but they're no longer there and their job hasn't been filled, then I'm adding another editor or another reporter that's covering that beat now. If I can't find another person's email, I'm going to use that outlet's generic tip line or contact us email. I always want to make sure every outlet gets my release. That means I'm resending the release to these new emails that I've just tracked down, hopefully within one to two business days of the original press release. Then you want to keep an eye on who's reporting on your topic. Do a Google News search for your topic and see who's on the bylines and get their emails. Subscribe to news summaries that different groups put out on your topic. Shameless plug. I put out a weekly justice news recap that focuses on Virginia with a little bit of a national flavor too. If you're interested, details are in the description below. Now, reporters are always changing jobs and outlets are always opening up or shutting down. Staying on top of this increases the chances your story will get picked up and more folks will find out about your policy. And finally, remember to use it. I've seen so many orgs that start out strong, then they fall back into their existing email list or social media to spread the word because they didn't get the results they wanted the first time. You put the work into crafting your media list, your email list, and sometimes it takes a little while for the uptake. But as you establish yourself in your organization and the reporters get used to hearing about your work, you'll get more and more story placements each time you use it. Now, if you're still looking for other tools to improve your advocacy, check out the rest of the videos on my channel. You can even find them by topic. Yes, by topic, because there's always more time for better advocacy in 10 minutes or less.